500 Watt Amplifier Weekend Project. One of our first customers who bought VH500 design was impressed about performance quality. Everything was fine for a year. Until in the middle of summer, room temperature hit 30 degrees Celsius and over temperature protection took place. Essence of the problem was in speaker crossover. Ultimate quality, 4-band speaker system has hard compromise in crossover design impacting impedance. Real speaker impedance over the wide frequency range fell to 2 ohms in some places even a little bit less. Low resistance leads to high additional heat release. Previously used Cambridge Premium lineup, uh, amplifier burns to the hell. With no way to repair, and Cambridge is a good manufacturer. In fact, amplifier provides good short circuit protection but not protected against reduced speaker impedance. One of components overheated creating chain reaction and burn power stage to the ground. Our product worked fine for a long time but when outside temperature hit the limit over temperature protection was activated. In low load cases everything is getting hot, amplifier power supply as well as power stage. Practically only solution is forced air cooling with a fan. The Hi-Fi world needs a very quiet fun, luckily there is a solution with Arctic Cool Silent Fans lineup. Although we don't deal with customized solutions on a daily basis, this time we made an exception. And developed high-end stereo amplifier with active cooling design. Those integrating home user requirements with professional amplifier architecture. We named the project VH500 Stereo Audio Amplifier Weekend Project. Why weekend project? Simply there were no time to complete project during the working hours. In two days from scratch we elaborated and built a new design. We filmed the whole process. And in my opinion we created interesting material for people who are interested in electronics. The growing generation of specialists will be able to get some wisdom or best practices how to do something. For my part I tried as much as possible to explain everything we did. Enclosure core components were designed using popular computer-aided uh, design software. Then we made virtual assembling and exported components in DXF uh, coordinate files. Necessary cutouts were done in CNC router management software. Therefore significantly shortening design time. Now let's move to the CNC router management uh, software environment. Our router comes with valuable management software allows to quickly draw 2D elements using it for construction shapes and snap to grid functions for precise dimensioning. The logic is very similar to the Coral Draw vector graphics drawing software. Unique of this software is drawing and milling tools integration in one with automatic G code generation. First components to be produced are the closure side shapes. This is non starter design with high probability to make a mistake, so we are making some spare ones. The lower part of the housing is where electronics boards will be fastened. For the modeling purposes I made critical components drawings with precise mounting holes. By grouping objects in the blocks we can estimate distance to edges, critical dimensions and optimize assembling. It is similar to advanced mechanics design software, where top components or board manufacturers providing 3 dd drawings for designers. Then the holes, cuts, external, internal, etc. are grouped by layers. Therefore simplifying rotor cut tools programming and reducing potential mistakes. Front and back panels have large number of cutouts. It is challenge for vacuum table because vacuum will drop and material will not hold well. In this case during the cutting process I left small bridges that will hold the part in place. After processing we cut components out. As you can see I have spur parts for just in case purposes. With time being I developed my skills and mistakes are more exception than pattern. But a new project is new project. Murphy's law has not been repealed by anyone. Since I'm electronic engineer and know the mechanics is just uh, superficiency, spur parts will give me extra warranty that project will be completed on time. Now let's move from the virtual in mind to the real world, where the level of responsibility is high. And every mistake in the virtual world costs real money in the real world. Welcome to the real world, where the first step is cut and closure components with required tolerance. There are four dominant steel metal processing technologies. Laser cut is cost effective and precise. 
Capable to deal with the thick materials and provide unlimited complexity geometry, laser cutting has one significant drawback. Material has been processed with high temperature. For thin metal with a high cutout density, like ventilation holes in caches, cover or in our case back panel, where we have large number of connectors, internal material stresses and bends. The only solution is combine it, laser and punch. Manufacturers don't like combined process. You need two machines and precise setup of sheet. And you should program two machines. That takes extra time as well as high setup tolerance, rising risks of mistakes. Exists combined uh, punch laser machines combining best of both technologies. But their startup costs are expensive and the price offered are rare are accepted due to the high depreciation costs. Punching is the fastest and the cheapest manufacturing process, but there is a limitation on the stock punches. You should work in a close cooperation with service provider. Cutting with a high pressure abrasive water gives excellent quality and result. But for thin material process it is more expensive than laser cutting and punching, and it is rather slow. For small volumes, uh, router milling is affordable, precise and flexible process. There is an example in the picture. It has the highest process flexibility and accuracy, but the process is slow. Additional cost is associated with the wear of cutting tool. Programming errors breaking the cutting tools cost from 24 to 150 euros. At the moment, router finishing cutting all six enclosure components. Accelerated episodes you saw in five times the acceleration and it is close to industrial speed. Uh, we cut with the following machine settings. A mill 3 mm with a 6 mm shank manufactured Datron. Uh, RPMs 29,000 RPM, cutting speed 15 mm per second, actually you can go up to 25 mm. But the lifetime of the mill and the optimum cutting quality at uh, 29,000 RPMs we got at 15 mm per second. In this construction cover fastening threads we will cut in the housing material. We use special rotating thread extraction form. The workpiece has 1.2 mm hole which serves as a guide. The process is fast and accurate. By design there is a low load to the threads. Otherwise pressed threaded nuts would be used to ensure required enclosure strength. The thread forming element is quite unique. It has been made from special material capable to withstand very high temperatures. Just put the former in a powerful drill on high RPMs and it will form a long thread hole simply melting ferromaterial. It is important to form thread guides prior bending material. The next, in some sense, riskiest operation is folding. There are all the risks to damage the part in which so much work has been invested. This is one of the reasons why for the first prototyping we are making spare parts for error corrections. In this particular case I have full set of replacement parts. So far, no mistakes. I do have a kind of budget bending machine. I did a significant improvement to the equipment by adding 90 degree folding stop. What was not included in initial setup. In fact, it was very important component and the manufacturer should include it in design. Without folding stop it's not possible to ensure a repeatable bending process. The other important practice is exclude A measurement. We use template made on CNC machine to ensure that all edges of the folds are measured with one setting. Accuracy in this process is critical. It is important to remember that um, every little mistake in the overall design will add up. Well, so far so good. Actually, uh, go like a drive away. Everything is accurate. Repeating process for a front panel, following recommended technology and process. Applying template and controlling does part fit tight. Glad it's still error free. So we made front and rear parts. The next are uh, enclosure side parts. The front and rear panels have two folds, side components has four. We will need to change the settings for the folding machine. We continue to measure carefully and I must admit I'm pleased uh, with accuracy and repeatability of the process which we achieved with such a simple methods. When we finish folding the longest dimension, the position of the folding machine blades must be changed. In reality, small gaps between folding knives does not influence folding quality. And for a large volume production, I would leave the last settings and fold both long and short edges uh, with one setting. Saving significant time and effort. 
In this video I included setting procedure just for educational purposes. There is nothing fancy. Slightly unscrew the folding knives mounting screws and slide them. I have already removed one of the folding machine knives to speed up the setting process. Our design fits into your height dimension. This is a smart move because the height is standardized worldwide, resulting in one of the segments that a bending machine perfectly fits to the dimension to be folded. So everything is set and uh, let's fold the last segment. The process is the same as before. Use a template and don't measure by eye. Carefully verifying settings and now we are ready to last fold. Some thoughts in the background is asking where is the project friend Murphy and when he will show up. At this point making mistakes would be foolish and I am rechecking settings with lack of trust to the first measurement. Checking again and again does the part tight to the jig. The edge is short and I can easily go missing misalignment. So seems that everything is fine. I'm telling it kind of emotionally because in the past I had large complex mechanical design where I made mistake in the last bend. Can you imagine what I have said about it and what I thought about myself? Uh, so far the result is good. The last folds and we have got through the bending challenges. In fact there is no shortcut to this process. CNC bending machines are expensive. And I personally don't know any prototyping lab that have afforded it. Those are only in volume production uh, factories. The good news is that with a little practice and hands-on and you will be folding at almost industrial quality. Last fold and see yourself. In my opinion everything is folded perfectly. Of course, it's too early to say done. The real result we will see during assembling. I had perfect match in virtual environment. Let's see how does it work in the real world. In my design the rigidity of the body will be determined by the pressed metal threaded reverts. In this case they determine the structured geometry and lateral load resistance. 4.2 mm in diameter made from the galvanized steel they are far more durable than aluminum parts. I need totally 8 reverts for each part, top and bottom. Thanks to these reverts load on the screws and aluminum threads are significantly reduced. Screws and threads just functionally press the cover to prevent potential vibration and rutting. The first time using this technology I was surprised by its efficiency. As a result uh, the case was unexpectedly light and at the same time durable. Well at this point uh, we are getting the answer to the magic question whether the previous work go to the garbage or just simply put all together. I think there is a room for bet and gambling. Already assembling the first components it was clear that design is successful. Everything goes together and is, it is accurate. In fact this is rather a complicated design. High number of details in assembling require increased tolerance. Any error accumulates and adds up on a final design. The last component cover will answer all the questions. Either it will sit tight of those 4.2 mm guides and the assembling will be completed or we need to make some adjustments. Well, super, everything excellent. It is so great that I am proud of myself. The next operation is to mount side edges to the front and rear panel. Uh, there is another important know-how. Even in modern factories it's hard to predict material bending behavior. Material has variations depending from manufacture and the batch. Slight change in the metal chemical composition and it is either harder or softer. Therefore the mounting rivet holes is drilled only when the whole structure is fixed. The front and back panels have marking holes 1.2 mm in diameter, which serves as accurate markers and guide for the bore hole. When the whole construction is assembled with a 2.5 mm drill bit drilled through the both materials simultaneously and bingo we have a perfect match for the riveting place. The mounting comes with a perfect accuracy, repeating the process to the front panel. Riveting tools and rivets are available in any Home Depot store. I use aluminum rivets. 
Uh, we may use screws as well, however, the riveting process has advantages. Riveting process is very rigid. The rivet's head is small, and we can rivet without breaking the structure. And it is also cheaper, a little bit of course, but anyway. Checking, can cover be removed? Yes, looks like everything is fine. What we have left? We need to cut threads. Yes, that's the last one. For volume production, I would do this after painting, but this is a prototype and no one is going to paint it. I use a bit intended for machining process. It fits well in a hand drilling process because it's hard and flexible in the same time. I don't know who produced this particular threaded tool, but it has been serving for years with excellent quality. Actually, the process is not even slow and can be part of the large batch production. The battery goes down quickly due to the permanent change of direction and continuous start stops. However, the second battery charges between the working cycles and we can operate without interruptions. Now we have reached the final part of the project. Of course, the base plate is not having presses sander for printed circuit boards, that's all later. I like the result very much. To adapt construction to other projects, we need to adapt just the mounting required for electronic boards. The enclosure is very light. Overall, a very successful design, a very successful project. Once the housing is done, let's start amplifier assembling. Even if it's relatively simple, we could be surprised for amount of necessary assembling components. There is a set of most common 3mm metric screws. The best practice is to donate a couple of hundreds of euros once in a lifetime never come back to this issue. You will get a fair price when buying in packages. Otherwise, the logistics of sourcing parts will take over a lot of time, and it's ten times more expensive. Let's put set of treasure within easy reach and look at the range of tools we need for assembling. So, a good Phillips screwdriver, screwdrivers for two hexagonal uh, heads of different sizes, a Makita magnet designed for automatic screwdriver bits, it's a great tool to use when screwing the hard to reach places. The nut and the washer sticks and does not fall off. Wrench of 3 and 5 mm. Some pliers, mm, wrench with a screwdriver handle and tweezers to work in a hard to reach places. Assembling components. Housing feet, main switch, speaker consumer connectors. Those are the good ones. XLR input connectors. We use only XLR type input connector due to the professional grade reliability and quality. Professional speaker connectors. Speak on type PER. Uh, we are making stereo system. Well, and mains power connector. Oh, oh yes, we need the fan grill and fan itself. Assembly we start securing four case pads. For this we need 8mm long 3mm screws and washer. There is no science in mechanical assembling, there is no specific tricks either. The smaller and finer our fingers, the better this job goes. After about 15 minutes I am done with it. For the first time multiply the time by 2. The next important operation is modeling the length of the mounting cables. The golden rule here is to choose why it's longer than shorter or accurate. For this purpose we secure amplifier electronic boards in the housing. And based on the actual placement we evaluate uh, cable lengths and their optimal routing path. When the boards are assembled, let's put everything in the housing. And secure the assembling with screws provided for this purpose. The design is precise and expected challenges don't appear. All screws locations are accurate and threads cut perfectly. A well designed enclosure. The modeling revealed that for the preamplifier the optimum position is by rotating them by 90 degrees. The connection wires become shorter and equal length. In volume production, equal wire length is saving machine installation time and increasing order volume. Larger volumes means better price. True, turning the amplifier board by 90 degrees, making optimal placement. And we can use some assembling connectors from other project. Then we measure and cut assembling wires. 
I choose signal wires with a cross section diameter of 0.22 mm, speaker output wires with 1 mm cross section diameter, and mines could be in a range from 0.5 to 1 mm, I took what we have in the warehouse. The next procedure is nightmare for every beginner. Variation of connectors is wide, we must choose right type of plastic holder, contacts and specifics of assembling. You need a variety of insulation pipes and specialized assembling tools. These components are only available in internet catalogs and specialized shops. Those are my favorites. All catalogs providing small volumes as well. Common components are in stock, pricing is volume dependent. All of them has advanced catalog search. Well-established logistics ensure reliable shipment. We are done with the mechanical components of the assembling and let's proceed with the preparation of the wire connections. I'm not sure about the correct process technology terminology. I will call it crimping. Uh, this includes cleaning the wires and processing the connectors with a special mounting tool. The work is kind of similar to grandma's crochet process. It is time consuming and boring. To visually see the progress I cut the number of contact stripes by 10. It makes this job easier by releasing necessary dopamine hormone rising motivation and showing the progress. Every 10 making progress and moving towards the goal. The cream connectors are prepared, let's look the range of tools we need. In the tools market price reflects instrument quality. Japanese cream tool for the small connectors with size marks. The best price to performance. 4.8 and 6.3 mm flat blade connector crimp tool. These are on a budget but works well. Small wire cleaning tool with adjustable settings. An expensive product from German manufacturer and excellent quality. It took me a long time to buy them and I never regret the investment. Uh, the product of the same manufacturer for a large size wires. I have finished the small wire harnessing. When process is done correctly, contacts will easily fall in the socket and make a secure connection. How to properly tweak these type of connectors I show you when preparing the speaker connectors. First, spill the wire according to the connector manufacturer documentation and specification. It can also be found empirically by trials and errors. Wire cleaning bars have market distance settings. As you can see, all the wires are cleaned equally. In manufacturing, it's called technology process. Now use a Japanese crimping tool. Wire part we crimp with a barrel mark 2.2 and insulation with 2.5. Unlike similar tools, there are two operations must be performed. Such a process is far more accurate than a similar tool that does this in a single operation. We check the quality of the assembly by pulling contact. It must be kept firm. When ordering wires at the factory, they indicate the strength of the mechanical connection to the tension. The mechanical strength of the plastic part of the joint is equally important as the conductor connection. I had a ton of practice and mine uh, crimped connectors are close to industrial. It will easily fit in a plastic socket and will provide the required connection quality. Crimping technology has entered the world of uh, electronics already a long time ago and has been an eco-friendly process for years. For mains uh, and high current application there are other type of connectors type called blade connectors. The common standard for electronics is 4.8 mm. Silicon tubes are also adapted for this connector. They are available in Home Depot type stores in electricity department. There you will find blade connector broad range of variations as well. I assembled with 10 euro budget tools and the result is pretty good. The winner is a two operation process. The connector shown in the screen is very cheap option from China. I need a third operation by adding crimping the connector part to provide the required tension strength. When we do everything right, the connector is tight and the blade connector large surface capable conduct large amps. Much more than we need. The connector shown in a figure will be connected to professional speaker jack. As you can see, two wires are imposed. The other will go for a home speaker connector. The same process applies to mains connector. 
For mains connector I decided to make equal wire lengths despite of different board distance to mains switch. The wires are selected with 500 volt operation voltage. For easy identification I use different colored insulation tubes. Don't forget about the 12 volts fan power supply mains connector to mains blade connector. The current there is neglectable. Insulation pipes are important component of the assembly directly related to elements of human safety. They also play an aesthetic role. At this point I have shown practically everything worth to know about amplifier assembling. Other elements such as the main switch connectors and wire arrangement repeating process. Yes, one more important thing beginners should know. For better system noise resistance it's recommended to twist the mounting wires. There are physics behind that, but I will not drill down right now. When everything is assembled, the visual inspection is must to be performed. Particular attention should be paid to power connectors to check their mechanical connection. We tighten wires with the small ties, making everything accurate and tidy. It will not influence sound performance, but it's kind of personal signature. I evaluate the work. With the result I am satisfied, almost equal to the factory production. The placement of the parts is optimal. I did turn on and off before secure cover. Everything worked fine. There were no mistakes. We can close it, tighten screws and put into operation. Let's see what is the weight of the modern 500 watt stereo high-end audio amplifier. 1752 grams. This number is important. Everything above 2 kilograms will double shipping costs. Parcels below 2 kg falls in different category. Above 2 kg it's large package, another category and handling. I have filmed the second amplifier because the first went to the customer. I haven't figured out what to do with it, maybe put on eBay. In this global flea market you can sell everything, just in case testing the simplest possible packaging option. The bubble wrap is amazing 21st century packaging invention. Just testing to find out, does it fit in large envelope? Carefully making sure, does amplifier fit in? I'm choosing the large bubble wrap envelope first. I only have 250 grams uh, to the weight limit. Carton box weights more and I need to fill empty spaces. So, perfectly fit in a large envelope. I'm big fan of large envelopes due to the easy handling and short packaging time. Verdict. Large bubble envelope is perfect for shipping. Good amplifier design with holistic product view. Small reward after work. I'm connecting Alice's passive studio monitor. I bought it in a garage sales for a sandwich price. It has survived infinite number of tests. Nevertheless, Alice's is near field monitor. It sounds neutral and in the same time close to the hi-fi. For average users it's almost impossible to imagine how small speaker could perform when it's driven by high quality 500 watt audio amplifier. Of course we are not setting maximum power. It's about 30 to 70 watts but power headroom is creating miracle. Speaker becoming alive and responsive, low frequency is tight and mids precise and crispy. Take a time and check exclusive high-end manufactured top line amplifier products. You will find a pattern that tamps have power range from 300 watts up to 1.5 kilowatts. It's all the secret of hand, solid power headroom working at one third of max power, and low total harmonic distortions. In the video you have seen a commercial version of this amp, the I kit uh, with finished inside assembling. Acquire ice power board and build 500 watt dual monoblock system by yourself. And it has exclusively good preamplifier as well. Recommended for architecture, streaming services, personal computer, external sound card with balanced output, uh, amplifier and best possible speakers. The noise floor for amplifier is so low that uh, the realistic feeling a sound is coming from silence. Looking to the best price performance sound card, take a zoom, USC2, full set of latest technologies in a high quality enclosure.